everyone, my name is Miriam. I lead account management for business messages. My goal is to ensure that business messages is a success for brands and their customers. In a previous video, we talked about the various entry points where people might see business messages. Now, I wanna help you create a delightful experience for consumers after they click on the message button. Let's start at the beginning. When someone enters the chat, they'll see the brand name and logo along with a welcome message. The logo appears as a circle, so make sure you have a format that will fit well. Here's a tip. You can test it out on the developer site or in the business communications console. Below the logo and brand name, the user will see the welcome message. You wanna make a good first impression with it. The welcome message should introduce the brand and set some expectations. Is the consumer starting with an automated experience or a real person? What can the agent do? That sort of thing. Up to five suggestion ships, which we call conversation starters, can be included along with the welcome message. Conversation starters can be up to 35 characters each. They provide additional information around what the agent can do and help guide users. People can type in other messages, so ensure you support free text as well. In this example, we see a friendly message and are told we're interacting with a virtual agent, not a person to start. The conversation starters are listed, but the welcome message does not tell us to use them. Instead, it gives some options and invites us to start chatting. Does the brand support multiple languages? They do? Great. You can customize the welcome message by language as well. The message can also be tailored to location. If a specific store is closed, for example, the welcome message can indicate this. Okay. Live agents are required within business messages, but they're likely going to be parts of the day when they're not available. We don't expect them to work 24 seven, you know, to set expectations. You can set up the welcome message to communicate live agent availability. We also recommend an out of office message, which is sent if someone does message while agents are not available. This can be used to set expectations for when the person can expect a reply back. Remember, this is async messaging, so people will message with delays and lags or at various times of the day. All right, are you ready to put the message button live? Let's make sure. First, confirm any automation is working and your live agents are ready to reply to messages. You might want to try this out for yourself. You can generate test URLs using the APIs or the developer console. Click on them on your phone to see what the experience will be like for customers. Okay, now let's talk about getting ready for launch. You want to make sure you have everything you need. First, you'll have to verify the agent and then the locations. Don't worry, it's not hard. Verifying the agent is a simple process in which Google confirms that the partner has permission from the brand to launch the agent and that the logo and other details are correct. The verification can be triggered by the API or console. An email will be sent to your contact at the brand, which they need to reply to from their corporate email address. Once the brand replies, it usually takes about a working day for the verification to be completed. If you're deploying the agent on local entry points, you'll also need to verify the locations as well. This step ensures that the locations the agent will go live on really belong to the brand. There's a few different ways to do this. All of them are detailed on the developer site, but whatever method you use, make sure the locations you want to launch are claimed and linked together in a Google My Business group. You'll only need to submit one location for each brand and all the locations linked together will be loaded up and approved. You can then select which ones you want to launch. No locations to launch, then don't worry about that step. For more details, have a look at the developer site goes through all the steps. When someone taps on the message button for a specific location, you'll generally receive the place ID for that location along with the message. Place ID maps directly to a specific location for the brand, like their storefronts. We might also pass information about nearby place IDs. You can get more information on this on the entry point section of the developer site. Place information allows you to answer store specific questions without asking for the person's location. Here, store inventory questions are being answered. 
I can see stock availability and even what aisle the product is on. It's really, really helpful to check this before you go shopping. You'll also receive the person's name along with each message so you can use it in the conversation, like in this example with an airline. The first name is used to make the response more personal. We'll talk more about reporting and making ongoing improvements in the next section, but just a quick note that we require an 80% CSAT score and response rates over 95%. After launch, a daily email is sent from the business messages team showing the average CSAT score and response rates for your agent overall and for your live agents. We have many resources available to help you learn more about business messages and build great agents. Watch some of our other videos for more details and review the business messages playbook, which you'll find on the developer site. If you want a more technical tutorial, check out the getting started with business messages videos also on the developer site. If case studies are more your thing, we've got you covered. Check out the main business messages site, businessmessages.google, where you can see our success stories. All right, thanks for listening and have a great day. Check out more of our videos. Bye.